Now, certainly, over the past few days, there has been a lot of reaction and outpouring of emotion and outpouring of shock and support uh, all across the board over the surprising and sudden news of the tragic passing of Jonathan Huber, better known in AEW circles as Brody Lee and for his WWE time as part of the Wyatt family, Luke Harper. You know, when you hear about somebody like him, you know, in the peak of his career, arguably the peak of his life, passing seemingly out of the blue at the age of 41, it's going to raise all types of questions. And there's going to be a lot of reaction, a lot of shock, and admittedly people wanting to know what the hell happened. It's a combination of curiosity, combination of, you know, legitimately caring about the person wanting to know, and sometimes it's just people not knowing when to butt out and mind their own fucking business. So I wanted to talk about this today because there was an article put out by uh, one of those dirt cheap dumpster fires, in this case, Bruce Mitchell, um, who writes for PW Torch, I believe it was, who put out an article shortly after the announcement of Jonathan Huber's passing. You know, it was weird because it feels like it, it started off initially as kind of a tribute, and then all of a sudden it went into a thing of, there's a conspiracy! They're hiding the real truth! I don't believe it! I'm not a doctor, I just play one on TV like Dr. Oz, or maybe I'll be Nick Rivera, you know? Like, hey everybody, I'm Bruce Mitchell and I'm a doctor now! And now he's sitting there and passing judgment about, you know, AEW's hiding something, his wife is hiding something, they're not telling the truth, and... We all deserve to know what the hell happened and what is really the cause of the death. Especially, it found, he found it you know, unheard of that somebody could be performing in such condition you know, a couple of months ago and then all of a sudden he's passing away from a non-COVID-related lung issue. And Bruce, you know, the non-doctor that he is, can't, just can't see that and can't understand that. And look... Before we get to the everybody roast Bruce Mitchell bandwagon, which I think everybody's done uh, for a couple of days now, and I certainly am going to here in a moment or two, don't worry. Um, I, do, I do think it's important to say this, is that if Jonathan Huber had contracted COVID and had potential to put others at risk, uh, then I'm okay with that information being needed to be made public. If he had contracted COVID, but then thought he was okay, but then there was a lingering uh, health issue that resulted out of it, like we saw for the kid that plays for the University of Florida, the myocarditis uh, that he got as a result of his COVID battle over the summer, like nearly killed him. Like those are important details to know. And I do think it's fair to ask for that to be released to the public because it can help in part inform and educate the public. And, you know, I'm sorry, but looking at it for being a person in kind of the public profile and in the public spotlight, if something like that can potentially help save other lives, like, your family does kind of need to get over the privacy shit a little bit. And I would have no issues with the request for sharing that information, because I do think it's important. But we're not talking about that here. Or if he were talking about that he was pulling an Abdullah the Butcher and giving Hep C to everybody liberally. Like, once you start doing that type of stuff, you absolutely lose the right to any privacy. People deserve to know. People have the right to know at that point. But none of that happened here. From all reports, all things, it's been said that it was a non-COVID-related lung issue. So for Bruce Mitchell to not only write that dumpster fire of an article, but then to continue to stand by it, to only later then have PW Torch pull that shit back once it got all the backlash, like is the ultimate of you're a piece of shit and you deserve every bit of backlash that you're getting for this. Because this goes beyond just 
being tone deaf for just making a mistake or a poor choice in wording. Like, too often in this world, the cancel culture comes in and as soon as somebody makes a mistake, no matter how small and insignificant or big and egregious, like, they're canceled forever! No matter what! There's no redeeming, there's no anything. Which, which is just fundamentally stupid. Because when you make mistakes, that's how you learn and grow and become the best version of yourself. If you never step out of your comfort zone and you never make mistakes, you're never going to learn. Show me a person that's never made a mistake and I'll show you a failure in life, period. So if Bruce Mitchell had just made a slip of the pen, so to speak, or a slip of the keyboard, or threw in a sentence, like, I could forgive that and say, like, yeah, you deserve a little shit, but people also need to stop being so butthurt about it. Everybody being all emotional at the time, get the hell over it. But, like, there was maliciousness and intent here. And for him to stand by that garbage that he wrote and stand by it and stand by it goes beyond just being tone deaf. Like, there is a piece of libel there, potentially. Slander there. You're accusing Jonathan Huber's widow of misleading the public. You're accusing AEW of misleading the public. Like, listen, that's a very serious thing. And you shouldn't really be supposing about it or proposing it's a possibility without some level or fact of evidence. And if you want to say, well, look at the whole AEW pretending Matt Hardy didn't get a concussion a few months ago as evidence, that's one thing that was poorly handled, and you're right there. There's a big difference between denying a concussion and hiding a reason for death. And let's be clear. If his wife has said it was a non-COVID-related lung issue and has said it, and other people are reinforcing that at this point in time, it is none of our effing business why Jonathan Huber passed away. Like, it broke my heart earlier this year when Chadwick Boseman ultimately succumbed to colon cancer. Like, it sucked. We lost a king and just as he was ascending his throne at the top of Hollywood. And it really broke my heart that he didn't share his story, he didn't share his battle, and that by delaying that message getting out there, lives that could have been said potentially may not have been. And that broke my heart too. Because he had a platform that could have made a difference and could have saved lives. But the mere fact that it came out what it did still will ultimately help people help save lives. But it's no surprise that he and his family wanted to protect his privacy. Because who the fuck are we to judge what other people do when they talk about their health and their life decisions and how they treat things? If it's not negatively impacting others, then butt the hell out. And if Brody Lee had some type of underlying medical condition that people were not aware of, including himself, if it was something like a lung cancer or some other form of lung condition that flared up and really started to take hold of him in the past couple of months, it is feasible that he could have been working matches in October and felt mostly fine, but maybe not totally okay, and then all of a sudden had a real issue. And it went downhill very, very, very quickly. And it's none of our business. If it's something like that, then... The last wishes of a Jonathan Huber, he clearly didn't want people to know about it like in the public spectrum. He didn't want it talked about. He didn't want it shared. He didn't want photos of him at the Mayo Clinic or at the hospital or anything like that. How could you ever consider yourself a fan of the man or a fan of the person or even a decent human being if you wanted to go against those wishes? You need to be a really bad person to sit there and demand answers when you were entitled to none and don't need any. You're talking about a man who passed away in the peak of his life. All the plans for the future now were gone. Think about his wife. Think about his two sons. The last thing they need to be reading about or thinking about or hearing about 
is you got some nerdy ass wrestling dirt sheet garbage ass writer sitting there and questioning the motives of what his wife and AEW are doing and why there's so much secrecy around it. The reason there's so much secrecy around it, Bruce, because if it's not COVID related or something else that could really directly immediately impact other folks, it's nobody's effing business. That's why. I understand we've created a culture of sensationalism in our media, in our journalism, where we have to get all those answers. Everybody wants to know. We want to know how much every athlete makes. We want to know how much this person makes for this movie. We want to know about this person's tax returns or this person's business dealings or this or that or 300 million damn things. And some of those I do think we are entitled to know about as the public. Some of them we are not. If he had COVID and it created impacts or if we hid the fact that he had COVID, that deserves to be talked about in the public. We have no evidence of that. There's no reason to believe that. AEW has pulled other people from shows from either testing positive for COVID-19 or even being in close contact, like, you know, talk about contract tracing and being higher risk for potential contraction of COVID-19. They haven't had them on their shows. So there's absolutely no evidence from a COVID standpoint to believe that AEW did anything reckless or irresponsible with Jonathan Huber. There's nothing indicating in general that it's anything exact other than exactly what the hell his wife has said it was. And that should be respected. Like, we don't need to know about every person's medical condition. We don't need to know all that business. And it's kind of sick that we have this thought or this curiosity, this morbid curiosity that we've got to know. In this case, Bruce Mitchell, no, the fuck, we don't. His, Jonathan Huber's family owes us nothing. AEW owes us nothing. And unless you can present evidence that clearly indicates that they're hiding something or there's way more to the story, uh, then you need to stop being a petulant jackass. Even though your article's been removed, you're standing behind it. Uh, you need to come out of it and you need to say, you know what? I was wrong. I apologize to anybody that I hurt. I've made a mistake. I've made a poor lapse in judgment. And I need to learn from this and get better from it. Like if you took that approach, yeah, you're still going to get the shit. And... People in around wrestling are going to whine and piss and moan, but they'll eventually get over it. Because that's what people in wrestling do. They whine and piss about everything, but then eventually they get over it. You know, kind of human nature. We whine and piss about everything, and then we eventually we get over it. But to sit there and so maliciously go after a grieving widow and a business, and in particular a locker room in AEW, a company that is clearly in a grieving state, as they should be, to sit there and go after them like this, it's just like, recklessness and stupidity of the highest order. And personally, if there are people that decided they don't want to subscribe to PW Torch anymore, give their hard-earned money to that rag of an organization because they have somebody like Bruce Mitchell on the payroll, I can't blame them. They're totally justified. Like There have to be some types of consequences here. Because this type of reckless behavior should not be tolerated. Because that's all it was. It was completely and totally reckless. So let me be clear again. Curiosity for folks aside, if it was not something that could have created some type of potential larger health concerns for others, you do not have a right to know why Jonathan Hubert passed. It is not your business. You are not entitled to ever fucking know. If you find out someday or if that information is released someday and his wife or his sons choose to divulge it, then it is totally up to them to do so. And that should absolutely 100% be respected. That simple. There is no other viewpoint here. Like there are many things where you can sit there and even in the earlier part of this video, I was talking about, you know, like some things are complicated enough. I've talked about that here a little bit in this video, but people should absolutely be roasting Bruce Mitchell for this hot garbage. Because it was absolutely hot garbage. And anybody that agrees with him is also hot garbage. If it, there's not a reason for us to know, then the family's rights to privacy absolutely should be respected. And most importantly of all, even though he's not here anymore, Jonathan Huber's right to privacy 100% should be protected 
and defended. And if you don't like that, you can kiss my ass.